Whether your beer is in a bottle, can, or glass, kick back and relax. It's Better on Draft. We are live. This is going to be the news portion of Better on Draft. My name is Ken. Thank you so much for joining us. It is April 16th, 2021 when we're recording this. We appreciate you listening. Uh, we're going to go around and see what everyone is drinking right now. For me, I have a uh, – I'm, I'm pulling with a Dan. I've got a mixed drink right here, except it's there a uh, uh, Tullamore Dew and um, Verner's, Diet Verner's. So a little Matt Bush in there, too. And then to uh, finish that up, I've got uh, some uh, Hadazaki uh, Japanese whiskey. So doing the uh, the mixed cocktail first to get me a little loose and then something nice and flavorful to uh, to go next. What about uh, what about you, Dan? What are you drinking? You know, I'm actually taking after you today, except I got a little Stolian uh, seltzer going on. Hard and seltzer? Just... Are you mixing liquor with liquor? No, no, no. This is just a can of whatever cheap ass seltzer i found at the store all right and that's it that's it that's it all right rob what are you drinking uh right now i just cracked open a uh drafting table unprofessional pills the uh imperial 8.2 percent or 8.5 percent pilsner wow won that one and wendy well, in sticking with my uh, women in beer series, I actually uh, found a six pack of Schmo's uh, Hooligan Red Ale, the Shameless O'Pikey. Um, I actually found out the day that we did our women in our, our drinking while female series that um, the head brewer over at Schmo's is a female, Gabrielle. Gabrielle. Palmer is her name, and I'm super excited to try her beer. Awesome. Well, uh, as always with this segment, he has his own introduction. Whether your beer is in a... That's the wrong introduction. Beer Robert with the beer news. Wait now. There we go. Now it's playing. We have Robert with the beer news. Uh, if you guys are listening live, we're, of course, live, betterondraft.tv, facebook.com forward slash betterondraft. You can join us in the chat. You can chat with us, talk to us, uh, especially while we're doing the uh, the news segment because we're paying attention. Um, you know, discuss what we're discussing, especially if Ken's on a random tangent about making sure you fucking tip. Uh, oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Rob. What's going on with the news this week? <laughs> All right, going on with the news, we're going to start with uh, uh, one of Matt Bush's favorite brewing companies, being Bush. Um, they have, or they are now actually in the market for a new dog, as they have set out to release their new uh, dog brew. Actually, it's not necessarily too new because it came out uh, last year, but it is a uh, canine friendly alcohol free bone broth uh, that they've launched and it basically it's sold out within like 24 hours when it first came out uh, but they are now looking for uh, what they're calling a CTO their chief tasting officer uh, which would have the responsibility of leading the expansion of dog brews flavor portfolio taste testing, quality control, and fulfilling the duties as an ambassador of the product. Uh, so the dog that is picked will get a, well, at least the owners of the dog will get a $20,000 paycheck. Uh, the, the pup will also have pet insurance and apparently all of the dog brew that it wants to drink. Uh, if people want to have their dogs applied to this, you can do that by posting a picture of the dog on social media, uh, along with providing their dog's qualifications. I'm not sure where, where qualifications actually go with that. Um, and adding the hashtag uh, Bush CTO contest. Uh, the thing I'm curious about is just from you guys, what breed of dog do you think is going to win this contest? Because I feel like it's going to stick with the cute ones. I feel like there's like a, a gambling website that is taking advantage of this, like a Bovada, <laughs> and is giving you odds of like what a Chihuahua is going to go for versus a uh, like a Bull Mastiff. Um, I don't know. I mean, you you know, one of the big uh, dog. Um, what are they like? Mascots. There we go. Like 
it's it's either going to be a dash a dash hound or it's going to be a bulldog. I feel like those are the only two dogs that exist in the the world of beer. Aren't those a bit overused? Well, yeah, that's why I said those two. That's the I think that's the problem with it. Is that I, I think I don't know. I guess I can kind of feel like it, it's time for like some other breed to kind of just step up and, and find something. And not, and I'm not talking about the hybrid ones. I don't want to see a Labradoodle um, or a, uh, a Chapoodle or whatever it is that anybody decided to mix together, to mix two breeds together to come up with some exotic breed. Um, yeah, I just, I, I kind of feel though being bush and kind of mainstay uh, i i feel like unfortunately i feel like it's going to be a lab it's just going to be a lab pup and they're just going to call it at that point but i guess it's just my thoughts so, i mean why are we why are we selling broth in a can for dogs now i mean oh you've never I seen dog I, beer before no i haven't so i didn't know this is a thing my dog's a dog is a beer snob he'll only drink barrel aged stout he doesn't want anything else so <laughs> I guess this is early up my alley as far as something I get for well, my dog. You know, maybe your dog wants to take a break from the alcohol and wants to, you know, go go a little yeah. easy that week. Maybe he had a rough night the night before. No and... pun intended. <laughs> oh. oh, the pun was fully intended, please. Um, but, yeah, I think, uh, I I mean, maybe, maybe if they want to go full meme game and do like a Shiba Inu. I oh, mean, see, that'd be a that'd be a good idea. That would be a good idea, <laughs> and that would I, I think to kind of uh, and, and I guess if anybody is out there paying attention to cryptocurrency and seeing Dogecoin going nuts the last few days, that uh, going with a Shiba Inu would be would be kind of the 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 taste of the week to to throw that one out there. Uh, Wendy, you got any any thoughts on it? So first, I would like to point out that um, the most famous beer dog was Spuds McKenzie, and he was a bull terrier. So <laughs> um, the other thing is, though, I would think for Bush, considering um, I, I would think something like a coon dog or a, something, a bird dog that hunts would be a good fit for them. I mean, technically, hmm. a dachshund hunts. Yeah. And it's German, so that makes sense that they would pick them as well. But I don't know if you're going to get a dachshund to bring this stuff back to you. <laughs> I mean, I just think because it's a small dog, you're going to save a lot of money on the free dog uh, dog beer. Because it can't, right. it can't drink as I much mean, as the bigger dogs. And they are super cute. I, the, the pictures of what they, they have and what they're trying to look for, it looks like they are basically looking for a puppy. So I don't see any type of uh, dog bringing a can of this dog brew to, for you to open or anything like that. Um, I just It just seems like it's just going to be that kind of stereotypical thing where, you know, they suddenly someone opens up a can and all of a sudden the dog's head just perks up and looks and just runs over to start sipping out of a bowl this bone broth <laughs> robert when'd you start a marketing company <laughs> um, i have to be honest talk to my agent <laughs> i have to be honest though if i'm gonna buy beer for my dog he's gonna have to learn how to get it himself yeah yeah why do you have to get the beer for the dog come on they should be getting right. it for you I mean, if the if the if your dog were to win and get you twenty thousand dollars, I mean, I mean your yeah. your dog's your dog's finally paying for something. <laughs> I I always get in trouble for for making the dogs work for their treats. I'm like, well, I mean, they, they got to work for them. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then, not all the time, not all the time. All right. Uh, so let's see the uh, another one that I had here um, because apparently there's you know, nothing else in Orlando to do that someone in Orlando is coming up with a beer spa, another one of those beer spas, kind of like the ones that we talked about that happened, uh, that opened out in Colorado. Uh, this place called My Beer Spa. It's going to be a new place that is going to let guests pour their own beers, soaking in a tub full of beer. Uh, there's going to be private rooms where each room will have self-serve beer taps uh, with three choices of beer and red or white wine. Um, spots will also include infrared sauna, private rooms, and cozy atmosphere, according to, to what they post on their Facebook page. 
Um, pictures on their Facebook page show that they are going to have some sort of some various beer soaps. Uh, I noticed some uh, pictures of like hazy IPAs and um, Citra and, and just hop specific soaps that they're going to have. Uh, the funny thing that I, that I was kind of weirded out about the story was that while the Facebook page has been up since December of last year, the location of where this place is going to be in Orlando has not been disclosed yet. But, you know, it may just be too early in the build out, but uh, I just thought anything shady in Orlando is just kind of the norm out there anyway. Sorry, Orlando. It's just kind of how I feel. <laughs> uh, but you know, just kind of wondering in what's going to start to become this new age of, of what we're doing with beer and drinking beer and hanging out in places with beer. And does it seem like beer spas are really going to take off? Because it, it seems like with Colorado having one, Orlando having one, I think there's, there's going to be some other places that are going to be popping up that the whole let's go to the bar is going to turn into the let's go to the spa since you know we can only at this point right now it still seems like you can only hang out with a certain group of people why not hang out with a certain group of people at a spa i mean i personally don't do spas like it's not something that like the the closest i'll get to a spa is i love like a good like you know, a couple 10 minutes in the sauna. That's about it. But like massages or relaxing and stuff. I don't think I know how to relax. Um, so like sitting in a spa, like all I'm going to want to do is just drink. Uh, so especially if it's a, if it's a tub full of beer, like nothing good's going to come from that. Yeah. I, I mean, there might be health benefits. I don't know it. Um, we, I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking in the chat. We got a couple people chatting in the chat right now. Um, but I, for me, you know, I, I'm not going to shit on somebody else for wanting to do it, but I, I can tell you right now that because it's not for me, I don't get it. So every time this type of story comes up i picture the family guy episode where they broke into the brewery and they were all hanging out in the vat of beer it, I, i'm trying to it remember it just the... doesn't seem like it was the... one of the first family guy episodes that i ever saw and it was a really funny episode but i was like you're ruining all that beer <laughs> being in a beer all i can think of is landfill from beer fest drowning in the beer what a way to go <laughs> Um, well, I mean, would it, would it be better if it were the beer that, you know, has been sitting because breweries haven't been able to, you know, sell all of their beer and, and, have, and have had to decide to either turn it into sanitizer or dump it? Well, let's let's look at the cost of everything. I mean, to fill up a tub like that's got to cost a pretty little penny unless you're doing like malt liquor, Colt 45 or something. Someone's um, pouring 40s into the tub. Yeah. So that's that's part one. Like for me, when when I go to a hotel, my job is not to be in the hotel as much as possible. Like I'm I'm I want to go to breweries nearby. I want to go see the scene, whether it's a bar or whether it's a casino or a theater. Like I don't want to be in my hotel. That's the last place I want to be. So uh, a spa itself, like I just couldn't, I don't know. I just, it's just not for me, let alone what I want to do. And I mean, I've spent, especially the last couple of years I was with Toast, like I was in the same hotel room, like every other week for four days out of the week. And I'm just sitting there like, this sucks. I want to go somewhere. I want to do something. Um, and that got me into a lot of trouble because that usually means I'm going to the casino. And <laughs> let's just say my luck at the casino hasn't been well. Um, but again, I'd also want to go get beer that I like. Like, what happens if it's all IPAs on draft or, you know, if it's just beer that I don't like? And now I'm paying for this very expensive spa treatment with beer styles that I'm not a fan of. Well, I mean, hopefully they're a place where they're going to advertise what beers are on tap i mean i'm, I'm sure you know something like uh, uh beer advocate or you know untapped or, or some site is going to be utilized to show what's there I and mean, if that, that would that would pretty much suck i would think if you're going into a spot it's going to be something like you know 70 80 bucks an hour i honestly i don't know how much it's going to be but just like you're saying the price of whatever it's going to be to be in a spa to only walk in there and find out that all they have on tap is fucking centennial and all day <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, that, if some of y'all have seen Simpsons episodes, will be just like that one episode where Grandpa Simpson walks into a restaurant and then picks up, drops off his hat, goes in a circle, picks his hat back up, and walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'd so, love to see that. <laughs> I, I guess I, I might be, like, not confusing, but adding stuff, because it looks like as I'm on their website, which is just facebook.com forward slash my beer spa, um, yeah. it's, it's just a spa. So you have to go somewhere else to sleep. So you're probably going to drink, and if you get too drunk, you're going to have to, like, Uber somewhere else to get home. Um, I, it's just, I don't get it. I don't get it, Dan. <laughs> yeah. You, you show up to the spa and you're like getting in a DUI afterwards. That's what this <laughs> is going to turn into. <laughs> now, if, if the spa bath was final absolution, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wendy's paying top penny to go. Even then I'd have a problem with it. One, because you're ruining all that great finance absolution. Uh, you're ruining. I'm a woman. I am not going to sit in a tub full of yeast. That's stupid. Fair. And you, got, you got the problem with people peeing in the tub, too. So. Oh, my God. That's oh, cool I, I, <laughs> I was not this thinking of that. Tub. I mean, now you are. There's there's definitely like a uh, in before someone says, oh, must be more Bud Light to the pool. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Come on. You know that joke. Some listener in their head probably said that as they uh, – um, oh, for sure. I mean, <laughs> I mean, for that point, then it's just going to be like, well, I mean, it's just like any other jacuzzi because it's just water. Oh, <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Well, for those of you watching on the uh, the show, Nicholas has joined us. We are live doing the news segment of uh, Better on Draft. Nicholas, how are you? I just got done putting my kid to sleep, and I've had a very long day. So. Well, what are we drinking to uh, celebrate him falling asleep for an hour? Uh, I'm double fisting, uh, but right. I'm, I'm, I'm going the Daniel route tonight. What? What do we got? Liquor. Uh, I'm going liquor. All right. Damn. Bourbon. I got bourbon from flying uh, from Griffin Claw. They're flying buffalo. They're bourbon whiskey, and um, rum and coke. Uh, the rum is Havana Club, direct from Cuba. This, nice. this kid ain't even walking yet. He's already got full alcohol. I was just <laughs> saying, he is serious about the liquor tonight. No, and, and you know what? It's actually not being driven by Brody. It's actually, oh, no. It's more driven by work. Than you, but. <laughs> well, Nick, before we go on to so. the next topic, let's ask you real quick. Would you uh, relax in a spa filled with beer? Didn't we have this question before? This is a brand new spa opening over in Orlando. Um, I think this the last one was like a hotel. Uh, I am of the opinion that beer should be drank um, at very, very most, cellared at times. Uh, no, I would not go in a spa full of beer, not even a hot tub full of Nick's, beer. Nick no. says no. In our chat, we have uh, Gary who said, I call that lazy Sundays, have a fluffy towel and robes, better beer at my house. Uh, Andrew ah. says, I'd rather just go to a brewery mm -hmm. that I like. Um, I believe that is it. We have Steven in the chat saying, Hi, hey, motherfuckers. Um, he he blur he blurted or uh, he he put um asterisks or not asterisks hashtags and dollar signs to you know make it you know safe for work. But this is a twenty one and up podcast. Real quick, real quick to Steve, motherfucker, get off my podcast. Uh, Damn. Steve is it? Gary's Gary's drinking uh two tides. How much cheese is too much? Um. <laughs> And it uh, looks like Dave Sakat's drinking a brew Detroit shiny dog Kolsch. Uh, so we got everyone in the chat. Again, you can join us in the chat 7 p.m. on Fridays. Rob, what else is in the news? All right. So another thing that we have in the news, I'm not sure if you guys have heard about the uh, robot experiments that have been going on at Boston Dynamics, uh, where they've been coming up with these robots to be able to do normal human things and, and basically creating um, Skynet and eventually going to take us over like T2. Uh, but they have their robot dog, which apparently has now been taught to pee beer on command. 
Oh, uh, there, <laughs> there is a video of this where they have the dog and it basically has like, you know, essentially the brew equipment on top of it. Um, obviously, I think it, it's like done beer and have like a CO2 tank. Um, but they have it just walking around and it's supposed to identify where the cup is. And then, of course, you know, urinates beer into the cup. Uh, the, the test, it, it kind of fails a bit. But and and it's just kind of funny watching this video and watching how uh, it's crazy enough as it is that, that the, the robot actually goes and then locates the cup. But then it just kind of screws up and then just starts peeing beer all over the place. Um, but it's it's just kind of funny to watch this and just see how this thing is working. And it just was like, you know, going next level is instead of, you know, your dog bringing you a beer. Here comes your robot dog kind of like lifts its leg into your fucking glass. Like <laughs> it just kind of like walks over the glass and starts pour like, you know, oh, it just... squats over your glass. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't even squat. Like in the video, it just, it just stops and it starts going, it starts, you know, <laughs> pissing the beer in the cup. And then for whatever reason, I think it's like the the mechatronics of everything just didn't realize or remember where the cup was. So suddenly the dog just starts spinning in place, and suddenly there's just beer just going all over the place. It's just like, going all over your carpet, just like having a just like a dog. dog. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking. <laughs> it's just like having a regular dog. <laughs> um, so uh, who? I thought I have a screwed up fucking mind. Who who wants who wants a robot that pisses into your glass, beer or not? Who can like? Is what is it pissing out of? Is what I want to know. Dan, have you ever seen the movie The Gambler? <laughs> I don't think I have. With uh, John Goodman, um, <laughs> the the person that wants this has what they call "fuck you" money. Oh, I you know yeah. what I have seen that. Yeah, you're right. I, it's been a long time, but yeah, they've I mean, got yeah. a lot of money where they can say "fuck you," I want it, and that's it. Like, that's, that's it because it's going to appear at some startup <laughs> in probably Boston. You know, like some some toast 3.0 that has like 40 employees and they're going to figure out like how to call the uh, the dog over because they're going to install it in their their app on Slack or whatever. They'd be like, you know, this is my cube. This is where I work. Come bring me beer instead of you walking to the keg. Right. (laughs) And I mean, the the the, uh, apparently I, I think from the article, it's saying that and of course, the dog is its name spot. Um, but it, it looks like it is the dog is available for purchase. This may be just like a new feature that they're still working on or in trying to figure out the bugs. But in order to get one of these, it will cost 75 grand. <laughs> is this dog anatomically correct? No, it's uh, no. no. <laughs> uh, here, Dan, if you don't have the link, I'm going to send you I'm going to send you the link. And I actually uh, there we go. Post this so here. I- like to point out that I purchased a unicorn for my niece for her birthday last year that pooped glitter ice cream. Oh, Jesus. So, <laughs> there is going to be a market for this. Might as well just have them both at the same it. time. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> but... Get your glitter ice cream and your beer. <laughs> If you, guys are, if you guys are watching on the podcast, of course, you can watch live or you can go to youtube.com forward slash better on draft and catch the video uh, when we recorded it. Um, you can actually see the dog walk up to it and just start uh, trying to pour. He gets it in on the first shot, but then he just starts to move around and just pees all over. <laughs> Thankfully, it was hardwood floors, Dan. It was hardwood. I, floors. I love that it's called Pissbot 9000. Like, can we come up with an even better name? <laughs> Uh, here comes your bud light <laughs> it, it's a crazy crazy thing and i just i was like this 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 can't be this this can't be and and there there it is the the piss bot 9000 
<laughs> uh, in the chat, Tito has joined us. He's drinking a coffee latte from Parent Brewing. Such a solid beer from them. Um, yeah. I was happy when I found that. Uh, Eric Lehman of uh, Arctic City is drinking his collaboration with Ascension Brewing Company, the Georgia Peach Pecan Beer. Um, and Andrew Webster is drinking some Old Tub Bourbon, and he's asking when a drone from 12,000 feet can drop in with an ice-cold beer. That's what he wants. That's what it's he's going to spend his fuck you money on yeah. is a <laughs> drone that delivers beer. Yeah, that, that that's basically – there's like some comedian's joke. That's not Amazon Prime. That's Amazon Now. <laughs> <laughs> Want it now. Send it now. Robert, uh, what else is right. in the news? Uh, another one, which it, it kind of brought me back to one of our favorite questions that we love to ask that basically said, uh, if there was a beer in your refrigerator that you were saving and someone just drank it, what beer would it be that it would that you would punch that person over and it, it kind of goes along in that lines and basically it's a story out of texas where um a 20 year old woman punched and pushed her 77 year old grandmother after grandma had drain poured her beer into the sink <laughs> <laughs> apparently they got into an argument uh, grandma was basically telling her to get out of the house. Um, the, uh, granddaughter decided to continue to use foul and abusive language to which grandma decided to take the beer and dump the beer into the sink. Um, the granddaughter then responded by pushing grandma into a glass coffee table, uh, which shattered when she fell through it. Um, she suffered uh, some multiple wounds to her, her neck, shoulder, arms, and hands. Um, thankfully, I think she is okay. But uh, And grandma is not pursuing charges, uh, though the granddaughter was arrested in charge uh, with injury to elderly. Uh, so I thought that was a little crazy, but I was just kind of thinking, I was like, okay, um, you know, there there is the point where, you know, you're punching somebody for drinking your last beer of something that is favorite but uh um i mean damn uh who who are you or who are you hurting over a uh, beer that gets drain poured or, or what beer is that that gets drain poured that that you're deciding um i'm going to assault you <laughs> no one how is that that how is that even a you started off, Rob. How's that even a question? Yeah, Rob, who are you? you who are you? Yeah, who are you, you hitting for pouring a, a, a Malo out? <laughs> Which... yeah, who, who, who's, like, who's ass are you not? <laughs> you know who I'd like to punch in the face? Well, the girl that did that to her grandma. Exactly. Oh. That's what I wanted to do, too. I mean, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. She's freaking 77. You push her through a glass table because your beer got drain poured? <laughs> like... I, mean, I will say, I could see my grandma doing something like that. She pissed at me, so she's going to pour out whatever she can find in the fridge. Like, what What beer is so important to do that over? <laughs> None. None. Sorry, did I, None. did I miss you say in the article what beer it was? It doesn't say what beer it is. That, that's, I'm, I'm curious of that. It's like, what, uh, what beer is this? I mean... I mean, there is no beer that's an excuse, but I want to know if it was just like some really stupid beer too, which probably was. It was probably like a fucking Modelo or some shit. Modelo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. I mean, it's Texas, so maybe it's a Shiner. Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, Shiner. I think I, I'd be willing to bet it's Modelo. Yeah, they were already like 12 beers deep when they saw Grandma pour they were, this they were, they were They were busy watching UFC 251 or something. So here's – you mentioned – I don't know if you mentioned it, but this girl was only 20 years old too. Yes. So she, she was underage. Underage, so. pushes her grandma through a glass table over a halfway drink or full beer that got – that probably was shit to begin with. You know, you know what I would, I would do is I would be um, – uh, writing her out of the will. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There you go. Yeah. I, I I would put a numerical figure on that. Oh well, you know my my share of to all my grandkids, I was gonna give out ten thousand dollars, and a thousand goes to each, and uh, now a hundred goes to the other nine. Congratulations, <laughs> kid. <laughs> that beer just cost you a thousand dollars. No, I uh, there there is literally, and and I'm thinking like, what is you know, like that beer. Cause mind you, like for me, 
a a beer, not a beer, but a drink that I would spend a little overpriced um, is like a Hibiki 17. Um, probably one of my favorite whiskeys. Uh, I definitely, I went and got like a two ounce pour over at Ale Mary's. Like th- those are, that's something that it's that good. The money is for that drink. But you know, that's what the if, <laughs> if like my grandma walked into me at Ale Mary's and just tossed the, the double shot, I feel like, <laughs> the fuck, Grams? <laughs> I, I might just storm out like I'd be mad at her and then realize that I probably drove her and have to walk back in to say, come on, let's go. <laughs> Oh, I don't. Man. It just nothing. Nothing like that makes sense to me. Like I don't. No, it. We've it we've doesn't. heard these stories before. Like somebody ate the last mozzarella stick and you shot him for it. I, I expected. I expected this out of Florida. I did not expect this out of Texas. Texas. Oh, we. I'm sure it's happened in Florida. We just haven't gotten any news about it. Yeah, that's yeah, probably a regular thing there. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. on page page four of the Florida Times. <laughs> page four. <laughs> it's. it's Oh jeez, just just so <laughs> damn wrong. I just I don't get it. Yeah, no, I, I don't get it either. <laughs> All right, Robert. Um, what else? What else we got in the news? We got a little more time to go. Our guest is going to be on at eight o'clock Eastern tonight, so we'll probably have a little bit of an extended break. We might turn it off and turn it back on the uh, um, the video, just so you're not kind of sitting around waiting for us. You can just wait till the the pop up comes up that we're back live. <clears throat> we got one or two more articles in us. All right, I'm gonna go through go through this one on golf that I found. I'm do that one first. Um, so I was digging through through this article that it was talking about how performance beers can help you recharge, help you recharge after your round of golf, which the headline alone was already throwing me off because you know most people drink beers during their round of golf, and I know several that will drink one beer a whole, and they definitely don't gain any type of performance at all. So this was was very intriguing, but it was talking about how after finishing out a round of golf that you basically supplement with electrolyte infused beers that obviously are gonna contain a lower alcohol percentage, but are going to help you feel uh, less sluggish and less dehydrated after your round is done. Uh, There were a couple that they had uh, suggested, a couple of which being uh, Rec League from Harpoon, uh, which is interestingly enough made with chia seeds and buckwheat kasha uh, and has added vitamin B and minerals, which I was not aware of that, um, as well as Mediterranean sea salt for electrolytes. Uh, there is obviously there's there's some of the other healthier low calorie options that we always hear about and see the commercials about with like Mick Ultra and just like all of the like Mick 64s and or whatever those other ones are. Uh, there is another one from Dogfish Head, the Namaste White, uh, which is uh, another one of those they call it the active lifestyle beers that that are out there, uh, which are this one is supposedly said to be enjoyed post yoga. Hence the name, which, which makes sense, I guess. Um, I'm curious about, you know, these life, just like these post-workouts and, and post-exercise alcoholic beverages, which, you know, most people I think would talk about, you know, when they're done with a workout or an exercise that they're having a protein drink. They're not having a beer. And it's, it's, it's not too terribly different because i i've heard that having a beer after doing like a 5k or a 10k is actually somewhat helpful um i've never done it but you know it, it's sort of intriguing but i don't know just i guess what do you guys think about beers after the workout <laughs> i'll go with uh oh go ahead uh, i i for me, I've never been one to, to drink after a workout. I think there's just too many negatives that outweigh any positives that happen. Um, but I, I kind of want to pass it to Dan because I know Dan has definitely gone through a lot of different workout regimens. Um, so, yeah. Especially like so, he, he would show up like right after a workout to the show. So, <laughs> so uh, I don't I've heard about that for our runners, too, Rob. I don't know much about it, but I mean, if there's alcohol in this, this is going to dehydrate you. So. 
I guess, adding electrolytes to try and counter that, but it seems really counterproductive if you're doing anything like if you're lifting weights or, I mean, golf, is it really that strenuous? I don't golf, so it doesn't look like it is, but I don't know. But I couldn't imagine like getting done like boxing or something like that. And like, let me crack this beer <laughs> and down that. It's going to be the total opposite effect of what you're looking for. I mean, with, with golf, it definitely will be strenuous on certain muscle groups and it, it can be added on whether whether or not you walk the course or or you drive a cart you know even in driving a cart um i know when i have played 18 that the next day my body feels a little just sore and achy um walking a course and walking 18 so you're, you're definitely just kind of feeling like if you're not in prime enough shape um you definitely feel like you need to be you need to lay up for for a day so you you can definitely feel feel worked <clears throat> without a doubt. <laughs> it's not really one to work out very much, which I think is pretty obvious. But I uh, have friends that do get together with their girlfriends out um, at different like they've been throughout the last year going to different um, like paddleboard yoga and goat yoga and all kinds of other stuff and they will get a beer afterwards or honestly some of the some people that i know started running because they wanted to take part in the um 5ks and the races that you get a beer at the end so i don't know if that is the whole idea behind that um i'm going hiking next weekend so i will let you know the first day I will have a beer and the second day I won't. And I'll tell you how I feel differently. <laughs> well, Nick, you and I ran a, we did a warrior dash, which ended in a 5k, yep. which yep. is a 5k that ended in a beer. What it was also like an obstacle course. Um, yeah. I, I had ran tough mutter too, and it is not worth it for the beer. I would just rather go to a bar. <laughs> than... Yeah, I agree. I'd rather just go to the local watering hole nearby the course and just, like it was, it was a fun uh, resolution. It was a fun gift. Like at the end, hey, here's your reward. Here is a medal, and here is your ticket for a beer. But at the same time, I could, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather run for the medal than the beer, and I'd rather just drink the beer if I wanted a beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. mean, we, there is a uh, a run club that is at Eastern Market brewing company that they they run every wednesday about an hour before i host trivia and they definitely you know once they are done they probably run i, I would probably say maybe two maybe three miles maybe they run a full 5k uh but they come back and they definitely just take a seat and will enjoy a beer or two so um i just feel I like can... it negates anything that you do like right after you know, I understand yeah. planning like I did. I did a lot for a long time, you know, planning my workout so that I could earn my beer. But if you're doing beer, you know, like beer after every workout, it just seems very counterintuitive. Yeah. I, 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 then I again, sorry. here I am. My fat ass is, you know, <laughs> not really much to say. I've also counted the calories of some of the nights where I drink beer, like watching WrestleMania on Sunday night. I counted all those calories and that was, uh, Oh boy. I don't even want to know 22, 2300 <laughs> calories just from beer, just from beer. Yeah. So that doesn't include any of the snacks I ate or <laughs> any of the, the food I ate the entire day. <laughs> like I, you know, I, I could probably go full, uh, full Latin and just, you know, drink beer the entire time. But I, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely, my downfall isn't necessarily the, the beer. It's what I eat after I drink the beer. Yeah, that's one of the biggest pitfalls of it. The mistakes, like, oh, look, I have all these nice, we, we get uh, keto tortillas, and I make my own keto tortilla quesadilla, and I'm like, oh, well, it's healthy because it's keto, and I know damn well it's not, but in my head at <laughs> eight beers in, because I, you know, went shopping at uh, Kroger for their six-pack for nine ninety nine. yeah, I definitely... I definitely have been drinking way too much beer because of that six pack for nine ninety nine at Kroger. 
That's and I'm actually, I'm curious about, now that you bring that up, I wanted to ask about that. And that you have shown some six packs from Kroger, which as you said is $9.99, but there are certain beers that get put into that six pack, not only from you, but there are other people who I've seen posts on Facebook that are clearly worth more than what Kroger is charging. It, I guess in a way, does that feel a little bit dishonest in, in purchasing those beers that are much worth are worth more than what Kroger is selling? Or well, is this Kroger just kind wants of to the, get rid of it? They didn't if I find it on that shelf, I'm putting it in my little six pack. They didn't break out that, you know, four pack or six pack because it was selling on the shelf. So that's you know and, and I mean I'm finding really good they they need to stick to the non and and I would, I don't want to say whale like that drafting table beer that I got over there, but like heavy duty beers do not sell at Kroger. They do not need to be selling shorts batch twelve thousand at Kroger. Like that that's just something that should not happen. Um, you know, Jolly Pumpkin maybe, but those beers are such a high value of entry. Like you need to take a you know, spend a lot of money for those types of beers. So I personally like I don't feel bad at all because Kroger paid what they wanted. So it's not like I'm ripping off the brewery. I'm ripping off Kroger. Kroger already paid the distributor who already paid the brewery. Kroger's just trying to get their money back because it's not selling. Yeah. And I mean, there's there's some really good, like I've seen Le Fin du Moon in there. I've seen, you know, uh, KBS in there. I've seen Rubeus and Blushing Monk. Like I've seen some major high priced beers and I just go for it. Like it, I, I walk by it every time now. I'm like, I wonder if there's anything good in there. And what's good too is, is that they have a lot of um, seltzers in there. So if you're trying to look for the seltzer or the seltzer brand you want, you can kind of like pick and choose and get a nice little six pack. So between Vizzy, Truly, like Matt Bush, who's in the, the chat is saying seltzer is perfect for, which I'm guessing is for me, like over drinking on a night um, to drink seltzer and not <laughs> 14 ounce beers. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's for for me. I just make sure that I, I I get what I want. And if I don't want, I wouldn't buy it in the first place. So Kroger is going to get paid a little bit of money. The brewery already gets paid, and I get to try some beers that I probably wouldn't um wouldn't n- normally purchase. Mm-hmm. Fair. I mean, it's, it's like you said, Kroger's already made their money. So well, well the brewery's they already, already they, they, they already brewery's already made their money. Kroger paid them their money. Pay that man his money. <laughs> <laughs> it's another uh, gambling reference here. Give me my money. Uh, I believe in the chat. Cash. In the chat, uh, Gary is saying Kroger and Hilton Head had Avery Uncle Jacob Stout, uh, which is a thirteen dollar bottle for two ninety nine. As as the local commercial, wow. two ninety nine a yadi of mine. <laughs> yes, I would have. bought <laughs> I would have just said, just, just give me the cart. I'll just, you got any more in the back? I Honestly, I, I would 100% suggest to people who go to, that have the build your own six packs, like the Meyer, the Kroger, just check it out. And I mean, if worse comes to worse, you might find six beers for 10 bucks that you might want to take a, you know, a single run at. I mean, Dan, Dan, what's the, um, the, the grocery stores out there? Oh, the Albertsons? Publix? Uh, there's the Albertsons out here, mostly Safeway and uh, Fry's are the two. Do that? Do they do nine ninety nine for a mixed six pack or? They do. Fries. Fries is basically uh, Kroger, same company. Okay. I believe Albertsons is too, and then there's Safeway. They might be as well. They're all kind of owned by bigger companies, but they all do the nine ninety nine six pack. I was actually looking at it today. They didn't have anything really worth, at least at the Safeway here downtown. It was all crap beer that you wouldn't really want to put in there. But um, I've seen much better ones at other places outside the city. But if you're a say, – say you're like, you know, Rob, and Rob wants to get into IPAs. He's not a fan of IPAs. You know, I might be projecting here. Um, but he <laughs> – Not too much. But for 10 bucks, I could try six different IPAs, and if I don't like it, I only spent 10 bucks. I didn't spend 10 bucks for six six-packs. Yeah. And that does make it good. I mean, that's a lot of the beer stores just like out there do that too. So it's, I think it's something that really caught on from the beer stores and it does help people find, you know, different beers to try. It's actually a pretty good idea. Wendy, it looked like you were trying to get in a word. 
Oh, I look every time I go to any of the stores that do the mixed six packs to see what I like or what I could find to try new or things like that. Like Hop Slam. I'm not a huge fan, but I do like to try it every year. So I always usually, I always, I always usually, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, I usually will go to a, one of the stores that has the mixed six packs and grab it from there so that I'd only have to buy one instead of a full six pack. Yeah, I think I think the worst thing it does is it discredits a lot of the local beer stores like a Zatuna Liquor who sells singles all the time and carries all these beers that you want. But again, well, Zatuna is far away from me right now, um, <laughs> but oh. I just it's one of those things to where I want to try some beers and it's it's uh, impulse buy. That's what it is. It's a complete impulse buy. Um, but I'm also smart enough to know what I'm looking for. So, you know, kind of like a, a person who goes to a comic shop who is really intelligent about comics. They're not there to buy comics. They're there to find comics. And I think that's what I see in that mixed six pack is, is I'm there to find some beers for me personally that I just want to, um, want to try. Yeah. And there might even be some of the mainstream stuff because I know at the Kroger's by me there's usually it's hard to find the real the really good stuff in there but every now and then there's something that comes out that is one of the the big mainstream beer companies that I want to try it but I don't want to pay for a 12 pack so it works out for me to try just that one now, folks that are listening in the chat, we're going to be back at about 8 o'clock for our interview with Rake Beer Project. I appreciate you listening to the news. But I have one more news article that Robert does not know about. And I pulled this just for Dan. Oh, no. Just for you, Dan. <laughs> oh, boy. Dan, I I care about you as a friend. <laughs> and I worry that you're not getting the beer that you want. But... Uh, Pumpkin beer? No, no, oh, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not trolling for once. Right? I'm not trolling for once. Dan. Yeah. Ballast Point is bringing back Habanero Sculpin and 16 ounce yeah, cans. I know. Wait, are they going to distribute it outside of California though? Because last I heard about a week ago, it's going to be oh, CA only. It is CA shipping only. I, as I'm right yeah, now. I saw that. I was actually pretty excited until I saw that part. Lucky for you, I might know someone that can help us out. Hey, I'm always looking for that beer. I'm glad they brought it back. It's a great one. Used to drink that religiously on this show. Yeah, that uh, was that was like because when this show started, Ballast Point just hit Michigan and they yep. just sold to um, whatever organization. Constellation. Constellation. There you yeah. go. I mean, Dan, I'm looking at it. It doesn't look like that far of a drive to head up to uh, California no, for you. I can hit San Diego in about five and a half hours. It's not too far. I mean, you don't need to hit San Diego. You just need to get into California and find a spot that they're distributing <laughs> to. I don't know if we're going to just get into California and find that. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe maybe at like Mesa Verde or Mesa Verde. Uh, pro- probably not. I'm, I'm thinking we're going to have to hit hit a major city to find it. Well, that's going to do it. The news segment, Better on Draft, April 16th. Again, folks, you can listen to us live, betterondraft.tv or facebook.com forward slash betterondraft. If you're listening via podcast, we appreciate you listening. You can go check us out on video, facebook.com forward slash betterondraft or youtube.com forward slash betterondraft. Don't forget to like us on all of our social medias, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Better on Draft. Um, we want to hear from you. Make sure you join the chat. Make sure you comment, respond, like. Don't forget to download the mission. Michigan Brewery Map App. Find out all those amazing breweries in the state of Michigan. I can't wait to use it for my trip to Petoskey and Traverse City. And that's going to do it. The news, no matter what you think of your beer, we think it's better on draft. Have a good night. Peace.